And I, I may be getting off of the question that you asked me, but um, would you repeat that? I, I, all, I, all I wanted, I, and you're referring to the Post-Conviction Relief Act, and that's well and good, but the Constitution has a due process clause, and people have constitutional rights, and Post-Conviction Relief Act or no Post-Conviction Relief Act, I'm simply asking you the question, don't you concede, in, in light of the statement you made earlier, that I think it's incorrect, don't you concede that where uh, uh, a person comes forward with absolute proof of innocence, they at least can get a forum before the court simply with I ask you that question in light of the fact that it certainly happened several times in the last uh, six or seven years. Well, Your Honor, I haven't, I'm not familiar with those exact cases. I'm familiar more with the ones on the federal level. And because I have one on the, the issue before the court is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to determine that issue that they've avoided. Is whether, is, is there a constitutional right to habeas relief on the grounds of actual innocence? The court has, the U.S. Supreme Court has never an, answered that question. It, it, whether it be a separate grounds of relief or a procedural um, way to get beyond the, the statute of limitations. But, you know, no, I don't concede the point that a person who has, is actually innocent, <coughs> I accept your, you know, that this court has, I don't know exactly how they got to the Ms. point. Ms. Owen, your, your time is up. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I just ask you to, um, Grant the appropriate writs to um, the circuit court to dissolve the TRO that's keeping our clients incarcerated. Thank you. Mr. Hood. Mr. Hood, uh, Presiding Justice Carlson has suggested that we may want to break now before we start, and I, I think he's got some excellent judgment on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Within five minutes of the break time anyway, Chief. So we're, we're going to uh, recess at this time. Uh, it's about 20.